Let's speak to my old friend, Dr. Jan Halper Hayes, former consultant to Donald Trump's presidential transition team back in the 2016 era, who's also the former global vice president for Republicans overseas. Jan, it's good to have you back on the program. Well, it's nice to see you, Matt. It's been a while. It's been a while. And congratulations on, on the Republican result. That was quite something, wasn't it? I mean, the, the, I mean, some people felt it in their bones. I know lots of Republicans did, lots of Democrats did not. But at the end of the day, he finally got what he wanted, which was a mandate from the American people. Absolutely. When you think about the Democrats, the independents and the Republicans that voted for him, he is, I know he's accused of being divisive, but his intention is to unite. OK, well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's talk about the cabinet picks. And <laughs> who is your favourite? Is it Matt Getz, the, the chief law enforcement officer, um, who is lucky that a report into his own sexual misdemeanours and, and uh, sex trafficking has been buried because he's resigned from Congress? Is it Peter Hexeth, the future, possible future head of the Pentagon, the biggest military enterprise on planet Earth in the history of mankind, who is also accused of sexual misdemeanours, but also, despite having been a soldier, has really got the kind of all-round experience of being a breakfast television host to run this enterprise? Or is it uh, RFK Jr., uh, you know, the COVID vaccine uh, sceptic, who basically thinks that vaccines are not a good idea and they cause things like autism. Which one of those is your favorite? Well, I have four favorites. One, Tom Holman yeah. and Christy Nome, because we need to close the border. Right. And Christy Nome uh, doesn't, and the, the fact that she shot her pet dog and the family goat doesn't bother you. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm so done with the media pulling things I, like I knew that you'd, I knew, John, I knew you'd say that, but I, it's just, for those, it's the, the, the trouble with this country is that we, we do love our pets, and we do love our dogs, and we love our animals. And so that, that is something that just keeps, you know, we keep coming back to, just like Mitt Romney tying his dog to the top of the car on a family holiday. We can't get over it. So just clear that one up for us. Why should we not be worried about that? Well, you know what? It's a distraction. Let's get to RFK. Let's get to Tulsi Gabbard. Mm. The fact that she's in charge of our spy agencies to be able to get down to what has been hidden from us. And RFK, uh, I know people are outraged because he has challenged the scientific community. Mm. But, but he's also been proven to be wrong on that one. I mean, the scientists that he's mentioned, like Dr. Andrew Wakefield in the UK, uh, who is the kind of scientific father of the anti-vax movement, they've all been debunked by, by many, many, many scientists, the vast majority of them, who think that this is just bonkers, the kind of stuff that JFK, uh, RFK Jr. spouts. You should have uh, Dr. Peter McCullough or you should have Dr. Judy Mikovits on because they're on the other side and they were at the CDC mm. and they can give you other facts. See, the thing is that, um, what's her name? She was married to Jim Carrey, mm. Jenny, whatever. She's on uh, The Mask Singer, but she has uh, correlated the vaccines to autism. Mm. Um, you know, the but thing this, is... But, John, I, just want to, I don't want to get deep into the science of this because, well, because I'm not a scientist and you're not a scientist and we don't have a scientist on the program who can, you know, tell us whether we're barking up the wrong tree here. But what I do know from having read up about it quite a lot is that the scientific community in all its weight and, uh, and experience has basically said RFK Jr. is wrong on this matter. I would say one thing, though, where he may be right, and I, I do agree with him there, that you have to take on you know, the, the, the food industrial complex in the US, the amount of stuff that's being put in processed food, you know, whether it, whether it causes, you know, um, you know, I don't know, autism or other deficiencies and diseases is another matter, but it certainly isn't good for the waistline. It's not good for public health. So if you can disrupt that, personally, I think that would be a good idea. Absolutely. And taking fluoride out of water. Well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, you've got lovely teeth, Jan, and I'm sure, I'm, like most people who live in America, there used to be a program on, on British television called Britain's Worst Teeth. I promise you, Jan, you don't want to be going in that direction. Okay. OK, all right. So let's let's park the fluoride then. Uh, and that's and also, I mean, the fluoride thing is just is nuts, isn't it? I mean, the flu there's a tiny amount of fluoride. It, they're good for our teeth and they probably leave our brains alone. So, again, the scientific community thinks for, for what they're worth, which is all that science, that actually fluoride is not such a bad thing. What about Matt Getz? Well, then? Matt, I mean, yeah, go on. Matt, 
have me back in a while once RFK Jr. is able to debunk some of the science, okay? Okay. All right. Don't I, I wait. close minded to it. I wait with bated breath. Um, and hopefully our teeth will not be laid out on the table in front of us like piano keys. Um, okay, let's talk about Matt Getz then, the possible future Attorney General. To be honest, Jan, I know you're a loyal trooper to the Trump team, but even Republicans that I know in Washington, MAGA Republicans, their jaws have to be picked off the ground at that appointment because he made an awful lot of enemies in his own party, including amongst uh, Trump loyalists in Congress. Well, he also has quite a few supporters. But the thing is that he is definitely a disruptor. And there are things that have been going on at the attorney general's office that even if he's only in there for a short time, he'll uncover and bring to light. Okay. I mean, some people would interpret that as him being the guy who will go after Trump's opponents and enemies in an orgy of revenge and retribution. Well, no, because we're not going to play the same lawfare game. No, Matt is going to get to a lot of the documents that have been hidden. That's mm. the main reason that he's there. OK, the document that has been hidden is the document into, into the investigation of his sexual uh, conduct, including um, having sex, alleged sex with a 17-year-old, which is illegal, uh, sex trafficking, which is illegal. This report would have been released on Friday, but he resigned from Congress early enough for that not to be the case because it's a congressional report. However, Texas Senator John Cornyn, Republican, Trump fan, not a fan of Matt Gaetz, has said when the Senate comes to uh, conduct the approval hearings for Matt Gaetz, he would like that report into Matt Gaetz's alleged sexual misdemeanors to be made public and put in the record. So there is going to be some resistance, isn't there? Oh, definitely there'll be resistance to Matt Gates. Cronin but do you support is, it then? Do you su I mean, are you, are you such a Trump loyalist that you will support that pick? Or would you say, actually, Donald, this was a bad idea? Uh, I don't think that Matt Gates should have been attorney general. He actually would have been better at the Department of Justice to uncover things. Um, but uh, I'll tell you the one I'm least comfortable with is Marco Rubio as secretary of state which is the one that most normal Republicans or not MAGA Republicans are most comfortable with. <laughs> so, of course. Of what's course. wrong with Marco Rubio then? Well, no, no, no. You have to understand that the way the Republicans are divided between being globalists and nationalists, mm. and it's not necessarily Trump supporters and non-Trump supporters. Um, Marco Rubio is a puppet. He is very malleable. He can be controlled. Um, he's not a, a person with his own mm. mind. And he's swayed. Um, I, he doesn't have the gravitas mm. to represent us to other countries, is my feeling. Well, unlike the gravitas of Peter Hexer, the Fox News television host, breakfast television host, who will now be running the Pentagon. That, that kind of gravitas. Well, uh, he has two bronze stars. Okay. He has been in the military. Yeah. Just because he chose to do that as the next phase of his life, why hold that against Listen, him? Listen, I will be the first person to say that breakfast radio television hosts should never qualify for high office, OK? Um, as someone who <laughs> presents a program between 10 and 12 on a Saturday morning. Let me just ask you, you talked about um, gravitas and and discretion, all these important values. What about Tulsi Gabbard then, uh, who's going to be, if Trump gets his way, the head of the, you know, the director of national intelligence. This is the woman who three days after the um, invasion of Ukraine basically said, you know, give Putin a break. He's just, I'm paraphrasing here, you know, he's taking back what is his. And when her uh, job was announced just last week, the cheers went up in the Kremlin. Is that really what we want? What you want? Well, if you are a person who thinks that Russia is bad, then you're going to be against what Tulsi said. Mm. But the thing is that they I'm... are out to stop all of these wars that are going on. 
So I, I don't think Russia is as evil as people make it out. The neocons need an enemy and Russia has been a good target. Well, they did invade a neighboring country. Well, they did invade a neighboring country, but they did it for several reasons, including killing off the bio labs that existed in the Ukraine. Oh, you, don't know, you don't believe that nonsense, do you? Come on, Jan, please. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry if you liberals just cannot what deal you mean, with you liberals. How, you don't know my political views. I'm going to clear what I think politically. Oh, I do. I do. Oh, you, you can so see into my mind, Jan. Biased. Your eyes are glee. You're literally entering my skull right now. I've got Jan Halperhaus is living rent free in my head. You know, anyway, listen, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for coming on the program. And, and it's good to speak to you. And I wish you all the best.